Good afternoon to you all. I once again welcome you back to the 42nd uh, annual academic sessions held by College of General Practitioners of Sri Lanka. To hold this session, I cordially invite Dr. <coughs> Namalu Luviseva and uh, Dr. Kalpani Vijayavadan to take the, the seats, please. Thank you, Bihan. Good afternoon to all. After the lunch, now we are moving to the uh, radiology question <coughs> session. Uh, now I am uh, cordially invited to the Dr. Udhari Liyanagi to take uh, head table seats. Today my uh, co-chairperson, Dr. Kalpani, will uh, give a brief introduction about the Dr. Udhari Liyanagi. Uh, thank you, Nama. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to have the opportunity to introduce our next speaker, um, Dr. Udhar Ilyanage, MD, FRCR, Consultant Radiologist and Senior Lecturer, Faculty of Medicine, University of Colombo. Dr. Udhar Ilyanage is a specialist in radiology working with a special interest in breast imaging. She joined Faculty of Medicine, University of Colombo in 2013 and serves as an undergraduate and postgraduate teacher and examiner in anatomy and radiology. Aside from her professional career, Dr. Udari also is the assistant editor of Sri Lanka Journal of Radiology, the honorary secretary of Sri Lanka College of Radiologists, 2013-2014, and a former member of the Board of Study in Radiology, PGIM Colombo, and a member of the editorial committee of the National Guideline on Early Detection and Referral Pathways of Common Cancers in Sri Lanka for primary care physicians developed by the National Cancer Control Program. With further ado, please join me in welcoming Dr. Udari Lianage, consultant radiologist, to present to you the radiologic quiz. Over to you, madam. Uh, thank you, Kalpani, for that kind introduction. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Um, First of all, let me thank uh, the President and the uh, College of uh, General uh, Practitioners Sri Lanka for inviting me for this uh, activity. Uh, so I think this, you all have planned a very, uh, very, uh, int uh, very interesting item after lunch postprandial. So hope uh, people will not fall asleep and let's, uh, without any delay, let's uh, start the quiz. Uh, so basically, uh, I'm a radiologist, and this is a uh, radiology quiz. Um, I do work with a special interest in breast imaging, but don't worry, I don't have only one question on breast imaging. I have 15, selected 15 questions for you, and I've tried my best to select um, case scenarios and images that are relevant to general practice. So I hope uh, um, you uh, learn from them. So uh, basically, there are, there'll be, I'll be uh, displaying the questions one at a time, and then you'll be uh, able to vote. You, there are four responses, so you can select the um, uh, most, um, you know, the best out of the four, and give your answer. And then uh, the, our IT team here um, has helped me to uh, kind of uh, uh, show your um, results, how, how, what percentage of um, doctors will pick which answer. And once we know that, we'll uh, move on to the, um, I'll discuss, the, discuss each question, uh, like, let's say one at a time. So we have 15 to go. I suppose, Kalpani, would you like to tell how to vote? Uh, so uh, I think it's best if you all can uh, uh, open, uh, click the uh, question and answer button. Uh, so that uh, there will be one uh, uh, window will open and there will you have to, uh, when you see the question which is displayed by uh, Dr. Udari, uh, you can uh, press on the poll uh, so that uh, you can answer the questions as soon as you see them coming. Yeah, so there are, there'll be four responses. So you I hope all of you have uh, opened the question and answer button, right? Th that's what they have to press, right? And then there'll be a panel on the opening on one of the, uh, on the screen, and then uh, you can uh, vote there. So shall we start now? 
Are we ready to go? Okay, right. Okay. So how uh, how many seconds do they get to answer? Uh, 45, 45 seconds. 45 seconds. Right. So I display. Uh, there will be 45 seconds of silence, and then um, uh, we look at the answers. Okay. I'll so you have to. Uh, I mean, this is for the actually for the per like people uh, who are online. There so you can take a piece of paper you can uh, and, and uh, the, yeah, I, so I'll, I'll give a few seconds to take a piece of paper to the audience who are here with us today. Yeah. Okay, right. So here goes. I'll read the question for you also. So this is my first question to you. It is a chest x-ray. This chest x-ray is of a 40-year-old male with cough for 10 days. So look at the x-ray. Um, the question is, what is the chest x-ray finding? Four options, A, right middle lobe consolidation, B, right lower lobe bronchiectasis, C, left lower lobe emphysema, D, cardiomegaly. Okay, let's uh, start the countdown. Okay, um, time out. Uh, so let's see. Um, I think the audience can see my slide, right? Okay, I can see the uh, uh, poll. Can you show me the poll again? Yeah. Only I can see the uh, poll, right? They also can see it. All ah, right, okay. So option A, uh, 67. Uh, we have only 12 people who have answered, actually. Is that correct? <laughs> okay, right. So uh, we get we are getting answers. Uh, mostly, most people have said option A. So we are still getting answers. I think 73% have answered option A. Uh, there's few uh, coming up with option B and C. Uh, I hope the audience is uh, able to. Uh, we can tell again, no, how to kind of uh, uh, yeah, open if the you all Still haven't been able to, but now this uh, uh, one. Yeah, that's can okay. Go on? They can still join, can't they? I, I, yeah, I think they can still they join. Can. So if you all still haven't been able to uh, answer the question, please, there is a, at the bottom uh, of the screen, there you can see question and answer button, which you can uh, press. And there will a panel will open. And in, uh, you, when you see the question there, the, the, the options there, you can use poll uh, to uh, answer the question. Yeah, I think now we are getting more answers, so it's okay. We, we let's move on, uh, and, and people can still join, right? Okay, uh, so basically the, the correct answer, as most people have voted, is right middle lobe consolidation. Um, why it is a consolidation? It is a, a vague, I hope you can see my cursor. Uh, no, they can't see the cursor, right? Um, can I get the cursor? Like, if you remove the presenter's view, I can get the cursor. Uh, so on the right side, you can see the um, opacification, which obscures the right heart border. So that is the uh, that's called the uh, silhouette sign. So this explanation sh uh, slide I have selected shows that uh, uh, the area colored in yellow is the right, uh, actually the middle lobe. There's only middle lobe on the right side. Left lung does not have a middle lobe, so it's a middle lobe. Um, pathology, that is why the right heart body is obscured. If it was a right low lobe uh, consolidation, then uh, we would expect the um, right hemidiaphragm uh, to be uh, obscured. Uh, so it's a right uh, mid lobe uh, consolidation. If I go back, uh, you can see it on the right side. And the right diaphragm is nicely seen. It is not bronchiectasis. We do not see ring shadows here. and. Um, it will be a little bit difficult for you to uh, appreciate the air bronchograms. Um, sometimes in, in uh, real practice, you would see that although the book says there are air bronchograms, uh, we might not be able to uh, uh, find that always. And the heart is normal in size, and left lung is normal. So the answer is right middle of consolidation, as most of you have got correctly. Okay, so the next question, uh, I'm going to read it. Uh, Question number two. This is a chest x-ray, an interesting one, of a child. The pair, this is the only history we have. The parents claim 
he may have swallowed something while playing. Now there is an arrow uh, which shows the, uh, an object here and the um, question is what is the object indicated by the arrow in the chest x-ray? The responses are first uh, response A is a coin in the esophagus, B a coin in trachea, C battery in esophagus, D, plastic bottle lid in esophagus. Okay, let's give 44 seconds for them to uh, answer. We can start the counter. Okay, time up. This time we have uh, 19 um, doctors joined 20. It's going on. It's okay, you can uh, continue to answer, that's fine. And we have audience here also. Uh, so, uh, let's see. 63% have said option A, a coin in the esophagus. Well, the answer is a battery in the esophagus. You are correct in saying it's the esophagus because uh, such a big object in the trachea, he, the patient would not obviously present to you. The patient would be in ET, um, the, the A and E, obviously. Uh, so it is esophagus. I'll prove to you that it's in the esophagus in the next slide. Uh, the question here is whether it's a coin, whether, is it a coin or a battery? It's very important to know because, you know, a coin can, Unless it is causing acute problem, it can just stay until you remove it. But a battery cannot. A batteries uh, discharge um, uh, chemical matter, which cause chemical burns. A battery, a disc battery, it is called a disc battery. A battery in the esophagus can um, cause chemical burns, uh, esophagitis, focal erosion, bleeding, and even death. So it is an emergency. You need to quickly push the patient to the. Uh, relevant uh, referral center closest. So let's see why I say it is uh, it's esophagus. There you can see that's a trachea. Okay, so uh, it's in the esophagus. Why am I saying it's a, it is a battery, not a coin, as most of you have said? Can you uh, appreciate the double line here? There's a loosened line here. It is it is the, uh, quite obvious uh, if you kind of enlarge it and see maybe. Um, in the small screens, you might not be able to appreciate. Also, in the lateral one, you can see this, uh, you know, this button-like appearance. I have some slides which I've downloaded directly from the internet. You can see this is a battery, right? So it has this, you know, loosened line. This is a coin. Coin is, you know, the same uh, opaque. This is important for you to uh, know. It's very because it it has implications. A battery looks different. So let me go back to the. Uh, first slide, slide here, there, you can see that battery appearance here, right? So it's not a coin, it is a battery. So um, uh, a take home message for you, battery looks slightly different than a coin, okay? So it's a battery, right? So on, on this, uh, if you take the lateral view, you can see the button appearance. All these are batteries. This is a coin, this is a coin. The coin looks different, okay? So this uh, double kind of ring appearance is there in the batteries. So um, that's okay. So uh, we got everybody. Uh, most people said it's uh, esophagus, but whether it's a coin or a battery, so we have we know how to differentiate now. So let's move to the next question. Third question: um, A previously healthy two-year-old with recurring fever and cough for two weeks. Again, it is a child's X-ray. You can see the facial lines uh, on the um, shoulders here, right? And uh, this child was previously healthy, uh, but now comes with, two, uh, with recurrent fever and cough for two weeks. What is the most accurate diagnosis based on the chest X-ray? A, pleural effusion. B, 
right upper lobe collapse, C, right upper lobe consolidation, D, right upper, upper lobe fibrosis. Best of four. What is the most accurate diagnosis based on chest X-ray? So we'll give you 45 seconds to think and answer. Okay, uh, let's look at the answers. Option B uh, has become the most popular answer. Um, about 60% have, 59% uh, have got option B as the correct answer. So what is option B? Right, upper lobe collapse. Yes, that's correct. Like 60% uh, of you have got the correct answer. Right, upper lobe collapse is the answer. Um, why it is not, it's not a pleural effusion. Pleural effusions don't look like that, you know. It, they obscure the costophrenic angles and they have upward concavity uh, in this region, right? Okay, that is the pleural effusion. Be, this is, these are um, like erect x-rays, uh, so that's where fluid collects unless uh, it doesn't have this appearance. Uh, this is right upper lobe. It is not fibrosis. Fibrosis is not this, you know, hazy kind of uniform appearance is not there in fibrosis. It's more streaky. Um, whether it's a collapse or a consolidation, right? There could be a consolidation here. There could be a consolidation, but the uh, most accurate diagnosis is here, collapse, because you can see a collapse causes loss of volume. Uh, so you can um, see reduction of volume in the lobe uh, and secondary signs, that is a deviation of certain adjacent structures. Now here the most obvious uh, feature is this horizontal fissure. Usually horizontal fissure is like this, it is a straight line. Okay, now here this is a consolidation. You, you can just uh, keep this in your mind and go back and see the difference of the, between the two. Both are right upper lobe lesions. This one, uh, this one, there is loss of volume indicated by upward bowing of the horizontal fissure. These are subtle things, okay? So um, this one is a horizontal fissure. See, the upper lobe is quite big, actually. So this is a consolidation without collapse. Sometimes you can have collapse and consolidation together. So if uh, you would see radiologists reporting as collapse consolidation. So there is an element of consolidation plus loss of volume both. That happens. So I think most of you got the correct answer here. So let's move to the next question. Question number four. Again. A pediatric x-ray, a chest x-ray of an infant recovering from lower respiratory tract infection. What is the explanation for the prominent mediastinum? Mediastinum is prominent here. I hope all of you appreciate that. And I put an arrow to the edge of the mediastinum. Uh, so how do you explain this prominent mediastinum? A, cardiomegaly. B, it is a mediastinal mass. C, lymph node enlargement. D, this is a normal x-ray. So pick your uh, answer. Let's start the countdown. Okay, so we have 41% uh, saying option D, that is, it's a normal X-ray, and we have 37, fairly uh, half uh, similar proportion saying it's option B, it's a mediastinal mass. Okay, so a uh, few people have said option 
A and Z also. That's fine. Okay, so um, this is a normal X-ray. Okay, this is a normal X-ray. Uh, I'm not sure whether uh, in general practice you would be requesting X-rays of such small infants, but it's important to know because uh, I, I mostly selected this uh, X-ray because of a fair fast memory uh, from as a house officer. Uh, I did pediatrics in uh, internship, and there was one. Uh, there was a baby who came with um, acute. Uh, Actually, it was cortical necrosis, not ATN also, it was cortical necrosis. The child was treated um, at a medical center uh, for low respiratory tract infection, and then um, as it was going down, similar X-ray was seen, and then he was thought to have uh, heart failure, and he was given frusimide, you know, the last uh, frusimide, and um, that has caused hypovolemia, and he's gone into ATN, and he came with renal failure. So this is a true case that went into my mind, so I thought it's important to uh, um, highlight the thymus. The thymus in children can be so big that you can mistake it for uh, uh, mostly cardiomegaly and heart failure. So it's important. I remember the radiologist at LRH said uh, uh, the moment she saw, even the pediatricians were wondering is this uh, cardiomegaly or not. She said, no, this is normal thymus. So that is my first uh, inspiration to become radiologist. I remember she just like a magician said, no, this is, uh, this is a normal X-ray. So it's very important to uh, know that. Uh, so this is called, there are a number of signs. This is called the wave sign. When the, where the mediastinum uh, hits the uh, chest wall, you get uh, the, the ribs, you, uh, you see this wave sign. Uh, it, it is kind of, it is not round, you know, you can faintly appreciate that. And there are other signs like sail sign. This is called the sail sign, okay? So there are different uh, appearances of the normal thymus. So just be aware that thymus can look um, very, uh, give right to misleading pictures in uh, little babies, okay? So let's move to the next question. Now we are at five. This time it's, it's a, a radiograph of an adult. A patient with recurring lower respiratory tract infection, I'm sure uh, you are very familiar with this kind of x-rays. What is the salient chest x-ray finding that can explain his condition? A, bronchiectasis, B, pneumonia, C, tuberculosis, lung fibrosis. So his condition is recurring lower respiratory tract infections. Okay, shall we start? Yeah. Okay, that's, uh, can we see the responses? Option A, 60% have said it's uh, option A. Uh, quite a number have said it's D, D is lung fibrosis. Okay, uh, let's look at the, can we see the x-ray again, the question? Yeah, good, thanks. So uh, response A, bronchiectasis is correct as most of you have said, but uh, some many have, uh, quite a number have said lung fibrosis as well. Uh, well, I, I agree with you that uh, on, the, um, on, the, on the projected uh, image, it looks kind of streaky as well. Um, but uh, had you, if you had had the uh, X-ray on your hand, I, I'm sure you would have figured it out because the resolution drops a little bit when you uh, project it like this. There are ring shadows and um, uh, like tram line shadows. You can see ring shadows here, okay? And then there are uh, tram line like, like shadows here. And this is uh, bronchiectasis and uh, lung fibrosis in the sense, I'll give you one clue to fibrosis. Like um, uh, fibrosis usually, uh, isolated fibrosis usually happens in uh, upper lobe, but you can get uh, lower zone, middle zone uh, fibrosis, especially in, in the event of uh, recurrent aspirations. 
ये देखें नेदा विथ फाइब्रोसिस बट यूजुअली व्हेन यू हैव फाइब्रोसिस इट ब्लर्स आउट द डायफ्रेमिक बॉर्डर स्पेशली इंटरस्टिशल फाइब्रोसिस जस्ट लुक एट द डायफ्रेमिक बॉर्डर द डायफ्रेमिक आउटलाइन गेट्स ब्लर दिस हैज अ वेरी शार्प डायफ्रेमिक आउटलाइन वेरी अनलाइन एंड द हार्ट outline is also nicely there so it is very unlikely to be fibrosis in this setting okay so this is bronchiectasis the, the exp uh, i put this slide just to show you um, this um, can you see the uh, uh, this is hrct this is the gold standard if you are in doubt you want to clarify you want to further uh, evaluate the the gold standard is a high resolution ct scan of the chest and that will show you Uh, the dilated, uh, you know, the bronchi here, and uh, this these will appear like tram line on X-ray. If the bronchus is coming towards you and it gets cut off, then it will appear as a ring shadow. So that is how you explain the ring shadows and the tram line, tram tracks on X-rays. Uh, the the basis of that, and um, you can see them uh, very clearly on HRCT. This is a HRCT of a, a reconstructed film. Of a different, dif uh, not the same patient, but a different patient with bronchiectasis. So the answer is bronchiectasis. Okay, right. Shall we move to the next question? Number six. X-ray of a uh, person who has been smoking all his life. Presents with chronic cough, shortness of breath, and uh, GP thinks is this COPD exacerbation. This is a chest X-ray. What is the salient chest X-ray finding here? A. Emphysema. B. Lung fibrosis. C. Right hilar mass. D. Normal. Okay, let's see the answers. Option A, 68, as almost 70% have said it's emphysema. Okay. Uh, B, answer B is fibrosis, 15%. D, normal. Option C, what is option C? The right hilar mass. Actually, uh, the correct answer is option C, right hilar mass. Only 7% have said Uh, right hilar mass, and I know it's a difficult one, right? I, I was uh, trying to kind of uh, point, prove a point here. Let's go back. So this is the X-ray of the same patient. I got this off Radiopedia, direct download, right? Oops, sorry. Uh, so this is the X-ray of the same person uh, that was taken one year back, and this is this person's X-ray which I showed to you. When you look at a chest X-ray, okay? Now here, there's this tiny. Hilar mass here, which most of you didn't pick up, right? Um, but I'm sure a radiologist would have picked up because we are trained in such a way. There is a way that we are trained to uh, observe the, uh, assess the hilum. Uh, there are three things uh, that you need to look at the chest X-ray, uh, hilum, hilum of the chest X-ray. One of them is the color. Uh, each, both. Uh, let's, let's focus on the first one. Both. Hyla have to be of the same attenuation, same density, right? Uh, this is it is important for the chest X-ray to be non-rotated, well-centered well X-ray. Sometimes you get rotated chest X-ray, then it's difficult to assess this. Both hyla have to be the same color, right? If there is, if one hilum is dark, uh, whiter than the other, the opaque than the other, then there could be something else add, adding to that density, maybe anterior to the hilum or the posterior to the hilum, okay, or adjacent. Right. Other thing is the the level of the hyla. Okay. Generally, uh, they can be either at the same level or left can be a little bit higher than the right. In lung fibrosis, upper lobe fibrosis, uh, the hilum tends to get uh, retracted upwards, pulled up. 
So the location of the hilum, you need to look. The color of the hilum, you need to look. The attenuation. The other thing is hilar angle. This is what most people don't look at. Hilar angle is formed by the descending pulmonary artery, which is this. And there is a faint kind of upward uh, density here, which is actually due to the right upper lobe pulmonary vein. Uh, what you said and done, the hilum has to be concave outwards. This is called the hilar angle. If the, the, it is not concave here, can you see the hilar angle is supposed to be like this, but then there's a bulge. It is not supposed to be like this. It can, the hilum cannot look uh, concave inwards or convex outwards. That is not on, unless the X-ray is rotated. If the X-ray is rotated, there's normal structures can bulge out and uh, you can uh, get you know apparent uh, normal things looking, uh, pretending to be abnormal, but generally, uh, hilum um, should not be bulging out, okay? So this the answer is a right hilum mass. Additionally, there is some opacity here. We will not focus on that. That is very subtle. That's the lymph node, right paratracheal node. Okay, next question. X-ray of both legs of a 52-year-old man with bilateral leg pain. So a 52-year-old man comes to you and complains of bilateral leg pain, and you've taken X-rays. What is the abnormality? A tibial stress fractures, hypertrophic osteoarthropathy, tibial osteomyelitis, normal. You need to look carefully uh, along the cortical margins. Okay, let's see the answers. Option B is the famous. Yes, I think very, very good. Like uh, most people have got higher, the correct answer. It's hypertrophic osteoarthropathy. As you know, uh, hypertrophic osteoarthropathy is a, uh, it's a medical condition where uh, abnormal proliferation occurs in uh, periosteal, in the bones. The, the underneath the periosteum, uh, there is tissue proliferation, which raises up the periosteum, which is called the periosteal reaction. And um, you can get uh, skin proliferation, abnormal proliferation of the skin that can present as clubbing sometimes. Uh, this, um, it is, this condition is characterized by three features, digital clubbing, periosteosis of tubular bones, and synovial effusions. Um, the secondary type of hypertrophic osteoarthropathy is the, like the uh, famous one, uh, especially it is associated with um, non-small cell lung cancer. This is uh, specifically called HPOA, hypertrophic pulmonary osteoarthropathy. So you can ha com have patients coming with periosteal reactions, complaining of uh, leg pain and bone pain elsewhere. And um, if you take the chest x-ray, uh, you will see an abnormality. It is not only uh, cancer, it can be due to other reasons. So this, is, this, of course, is an abscess, okay, patient, uh, um, x-ray of a patient with lung abscess who presented with leg pain, okay? So let's uh, move to the next question, next, uh, question because time is kind of uh, running. A common scenario, patient with left shoulder pain, patient with shoulder pain, this is left shoulder x-ray. What is the diagnosis? A osteoarthritis of the shoulder joint, B, rheumatoid arthritis of the shoulder joint, C, calcific tendinitis of the prospinatus, D, fracture neck of humerus.
Yes, 90% have got the correct answer. Calcific tendinitis of supraspinatus. By looking at the, can you see the picture again, the x-ray? Uh, looking at the, uh, you can see this uh, calcification here, and uh, we know our anatomy. This is the insertion of the supraspinatus. Right, so this is calcification of the supraspinatus tendon. This is another patient uh, um, with a kind of a more dense calcification. So uh, the, it, it's very straightforward too. I'm sure all of you are very familiar with it. Yeah, good. Okay, let's go to the next one. Five-year-old boy with atraumatic left hip pain. The blood tests are normal. What is the diagnosis? I'm sure this is a very easy one for all the CPs. A, osteoarthritis of hip. B, Perthes disease. C, slipped femoral epiphysis. D, osteomyelitis. Left hip pain, no trauma. Okay, let's see the answers. Perthes disease is the answer, and 55 have got it. Option C, what is option C? Oh, slip femoral epiphysis. Uh, the answer is Perthes disease. Uh, why, can we see the um, x-rays, please? Yeah, the answer is Perthes disease. If you look at the left hip, and you compare with the normal side, this is the head of the femur, and this is, of course, the growth plate, which is still uh, not yet fused in this five-year-old boy. And um, can you see this head is smaller and it's denser, right? This is like a vascular necrosis, like um, pathology happening here. Of course, it would have been there for some time. He is getting some irregularity, and uh, he might end up with osteoarthritis unless it is intervened. Uh, the epiphysis has not slipped. It is uh, everything, the whole complex is intact. You get the metaphysis, the growth plate, and the epiphysis. Uh, they're all intact. I'll show you a slipped femoral epiphysis here. I thought some people might pick it up, so I tried to find a picture. Can you see this is a normal complex in a different uh, patient? Here, this, like, if this is, oh, sorry. If this is the ice cream, uh, let's say this is, if you call this ice cream cone you know, where we eat the ice cream, and this part is the ice cream scoop, here the ice cream has fallen off the cone, right? And that is the slipped femoral epiphysis, right? So some, uh, I'm sure you won't make that mistake again. Here, um, this one is another condition I just wanted to show you. This is the normal configura anatomical configuration. Here the uh, head has moved. This is the um, congenital hip dysplasia, just to show you, right? So uh, causes of uh, hip pain. Next one. Patient with chronic headache, what is the diagnosis? A, frontal sinusitis. B, right maxillary sinusitis. C, left maxillary sinusitis. D, skull fracture. Side has been marked for you. Oops, okay, there. Yeah. This is left side. Time out, okay, let's see the answers. Option C, 
left maxillary sinusitis, yes, 86% have got it correct, yes, that is the, uh, so you got it correct most, almost all of you, left maxillary sinusitis. Uh, I'll give you um, uh, a kind of a guide, okay, when you look at the sinus x-ray, you, I'm sure all of you can identify the frontal sinuses, these are the orbits, right orbit, left orbit, nasal septum and the uh, nasal cavity here, and this is the maxillary sinus, okay? And uh, beyond the maxilla, you get some soft tissue here on this side. Uh, and here on this side, the maxillary sinus is not clearly seen, so that is opaque. Um, so this is left maxillary sinus, uh, sinusitis. Just come, when you see the X-ray, compare the d density of the frontal sinus with that of the orbit, adjacent orbit. Generally, the uh, well-aerated frontal sinus has to be uh, um, radio-lucent uh, than the orbit, okay? Yeah, then you compare the, uh, compare the maxillary sinus with this density here. The, the maxillary sinus has air, this is soft tissue. So a sinus has to be darker than that. When you do the same here, I keep losing it here. When you do that, uh, compare this with this one, this is, this, these are the same density. So this is uh, definitely not, there's no air. So this is opaque, right? So it is left maxillary sinusitis. This is a different patient with the air fluid level. When they have acute sinusitis with air fluid level, in the sinus view, the dependent air can collect, right? The dependent fluid, uh, fluid can collect in the dependent region. The next one, 25-year-old female with two-month history of pain and swelling on dorsum of the foot. What is the diagnosis? Osteomyelitis, rheumatoid arthritis, stress fracture, bone tumor. Okay, let's look at the answers. Option B, rheumatoid arthritis. All right, okay, option C, stress fracture, option D, right, okay. Um, actually, um, uh, this, the correct answer is C. Correct answer is C, a stress fracture. Uh, this is called a March fracture, as you know. Uh, the metatarsal uh, fractures, you normally you do not see the cortical fracture line, you only see a um, periosteal reaction, uh, which is because stress fractures, they are slow fractures, they are not acute, you know, like breakthrough fractures where uh, uh, a sudden trauma and there's a break, it's not like that. So that by the time they present, they, we, they see, uh, they have this periosteal reaction. Okay, so it's a stress fracture. Rheumatoid arthritis is a totally different um, picture. You, these joint spaces are normal and quite smooth, uh, like outlines are very smooth. There is no, uh, and, and if all the joints are nice, uh, so there is no arthritis here. This is a um, similar patient. Uh, if you do an isotope st scan, you can see a hot spot because of the activity here, okay? So we are behind time, so uh, this time, shall we uh, give 30 seconds? Yeah, yeah okay, mm -hmm. right. So we have only a um, few more questions. A 12-year-old boy uh, came with painful mass swelling uh, in the lower part of left femur. What is the diagnosis? Osteomyelitis, osteosarcoma, osteochondroma, soft tissue calcification. Best of four. Okay, uh, shall we see the answers? Uh, 
Option B, osteosarcoma. Yes, you've got the correct answer. Some have said C and D also, osteochondroma. Osteochondroma is a benign thing. You don't see this irregular appearance. So this is, there, are soft tissue. there is some element of soft tissue calcification, but uh, there, is, uh, there are other salient features of uh, osteosarcoma here. Can you see this uh, Codman's triangle? The, there is, all this area is uh, tumor. What is calcified only you are seeing, what is actually ossified you are seeing, but there's a lot of destruction here. The destruction and here you can see the, uh, what is called the Codman's triangle. This is the, peri the bone, uh, the, the tumor tissue has elevated the periosteum of the bone. So this is a salient feature, right? Okay. And um, just to show you, this is a pathological specimen of a different patient. Another patient showing the MRI uh, features here and another patient's X-ray of a tibial osteosarcoma, right? So osteosarcoma is it's a very uh, traumatic um, condition to see both for the doctor and for the patient, right, at very young age. Uh, next question, X-ray KUB of a 70-year-old male with right loin pain. I'm sure all of you are very familiar with this. What is the diagnosis? Right renal calculus, right ureteric calculus, renal tumor, Bilateral lower ureteric calculi. Okay, we've given you very little time. We are not keeping our promise with time. I hope you don't mind because we are behind time. Uh, right ureteric calculus, yes, 60% uh, have got the correct answer. Bilateral lower ureteric calculi uh, has become D. Oh, right. No, the, the, what you see here are not ureteric calculi. Actually, I also don't know what they are because uh, initially I thought they are, um, you know, the, when you do LRT, you put LRT clips, but they are not as big as this, but this is a male. Uh, so don't ask me what they are, I also don't know, but they are definitely not, uh, there's some kind of uh, either some surgical thing or something on the uh, patient's um, uh, body, the trouser or something. Sometimes you can get LRT clips also like this. Uh, so I, do, I, I honestly don't know what they are, but they are, are some artificial uh, man-made thing which is shown here. Uh, the calculus is here, right? Can you see a CTKUB showing the calculus? CTKUB is uh, virtually, they, they show all calculi, including radio lucent calculi. Virtually all calculi are seen on CTKUB. One before the last. So I, I have to put a breast imaging because my special interest is in breast imaging. So uh, I will not ask you to identify, I'll ask you the management. So a 25 year old male, uh, sorry, female, uh oh. We have a problem here. Okay, so I will read the question. Um, there's a small mistake here. A 25-year-old uh, lady uh, came with uh, pain in the breast. There's a mistake here, right? The question. Uh, so a female came, 25-year-old lady came with uh, bilateral mastalgia. You examine, there's nothing. And um, anyway, you ask for a request for the ultrasound scan because the patient was so worried. And um, the report comes as uh, cyst in uh, right breast by RETS2. What is the imaging follow-up needed for this patient? What will you do next? So bilateral mastalgia, examination NAD, ultrasound says by RETS2, simple cyst in right breast. What is the imaging follow-up? You request an ultrasound scan in six months. This is called short interval follow-up. B. You send the patient for a mammogram, she's 25 years. C, you request for ultrasound guided cyst aspiration, she has bilateral mastalgia. Um, no further imaging needed. So what's the answer? Very interesting responses are coming up. I think for once we have difference, uh, divided opinion. 
among the general practitioners. So we need to do some breast imaging <laughs> uh, discussion later. Okay, right. So basically, I've given you the uh, I've given you the uh, clues. Okay, so um, it's by rats too. My rats too is benign. It's it's 100 percent benign, right? So for this cyst, you don't need to do anything. So the question is, what is the imaging follow-up needed for this lesion? So this lesion, no follow-up. The answer is no further imaging needed. But for your patient, if she is having breast pain, you need to give uh, analgesics or whatever your pain management, which I'm not f uh, an expert on. So you manage her pain. If she said lo local pain at this point of let's say 12 o'clock position uh, cyst, and she said it hurts here a lot. Yes, fair enough to get it aspirated, but it can fill, uh, fill again. There's no guarantee that will go away, right? If it's infected, yes, aspirate, treat accordingly. But for a bi-red stimulation, you do not need imaging follow-up. Imaging follow-up is not needed. This is the bi uh, this um, like um, bi uh, ACR, American College of um, Radiology guideline. You see, bi rats too, it's benign. If it's a screening patient, you go for routine screening, but this is not a screening patient, so uh, the likelihood of cancer is essentially zero. So you manage clinically, okay? Right. So last question. I'm sorry I'm taking the next speaker's time. Uh, last one. So you request uh, X-ray lumbar spine, AP lateral, for a 25-year-old patient, let's say a medical student, finally a medical student, who comes with persistent low back pain, comes to you, says I can't study my back uh, is uh, painful and you request x-ray lumbar spine my question to you is not the abnormality these are normal x-rays what is the dose of radiation incurred to this patient by this investigation so let's take it as equivalence of chest x-rays if chest x uh, chest x-ray is 0 0.01 millisieverts so I will not ask you figures what we normally do in uh, practical purposes we say one x equivalent to one chest x-ray two like that so the Answers are equivalent to five chest X-rays, 15 chest X-rays, 55 chest X-rays, 75 chest X-rays. So take your pick. This is the last question. Okay, let's see the answers. Option B, 15 chest X-rays. The answer is D, 75 chest X-rays. I know, I, I know, this is why I put it as the last slide to finish off with, oh no, right? Yeah, so it is 75 chest X-rays, even more some, some, you know, there are different research and calculations, some say 80 chest X-rays. So, Every XA is not equivalent, though you have to carry, I hope at least if you can carry the uh, message that uh, you request radiation images only if the benefit is more than, more than the risk. So you'll have to know the risk before you write the prescription of radiation on patient. As for lumbar spine, I'm sure all of you are aware, uh, there is strong evidence indicating very little benefit from routine lumbar spine X-rays for low back pain. For patient with acute subacute chronic low back pain, no low back pain of non-specified duration, routine lumbar x-rays should not be requested because it does not help uh, uh, most of the time. Uh, lumbar x-rays should only be reserved for patients with severe or progressive neurological deficits or suspicion of severe underlying condition. If you uh, suspect something severe, yes, it is your clinical judgment, but not as a routine practice, just to please the patient because you are writing a prescription for uh, 70 chest x-rays. This is the, uh, some other things I wanted to show you, so we don't have time to uh, go into each one of them. So thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Udari Lienage, for that uh, very useful and very interesting session. And uh, now it is time to uh, award the uh, token of appreciation. I call Dr. Nama Lulvisheva to give away the token of appreciation to Dr. Udari Lienage.